Joining me today is Sandy Harrison Cooksey. She is a voice actor. How fun is that? And we're actually going to be talking about mastering the double life, if you will, between nine to five and side hustle. I have to give Sandy a moment to shine, share more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Of course, CJ. Thank you for having me. It is truly an honor. So Sandy Harrison Cooksey, voice actor, um, also a wife, a daughter, a niece, a sister. Um, and I came from the corporate world. Um, never thought I would be an entrepreneur. Came okay. from the corporate world uh, several decades. I don't want to age myself. Um and I just thought I was going to, you know, work corporate America and retire. And my job was a project manager. So it really was a good fit for me because I like putting things in order. I like organizing things. Um, I like starting something and then seeing it go to the end and then mm -hmm. starting something new again. So um, I've always loved voice acting since I was a child. And I just never pursued it um, because I just got caught up in that corporate traditional dream. You know, you just work and you retire or whatever. So I started pursuing voice acting in 2013, taking classes and I just fell in love. I remember the first class I took, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. So mm -hmm. I started doing that and I continued to work in corporate America and so the days and nights were very long. Um, you know, after I got home from corporate America, I would just start recording in the booth. And sometimes that would last till about 11. And, you know, as you start out, you just learn. And so you have to get to know um, your speed and turnaround time and all that. So it's a great, wonderful field. I use my voice to connect, to serve, engage and inform listeners and I just love working on each and every different type of project. So it, it was a great fit for me. Before we um, started recording, I had said, well, I'm going to ask the question. And basically, that's what we're going to be talking about today, your transition story. And I know in one of our previous conversations, you had said that you, your, both your lives were pretty much separate, right? And I know this yeah. is something that people kind of either struggle with or they're, they're trying to decide on how much do the two become kind of intertwined. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But of course, I have to ask you, what was your journey from employee to entrepreneur, like your experience like? Well, journey is a good word because it's still going and I'm still mm -hmm. growing. Um, it was quite different for me because, you know, in your corporate nine to five job, you're used to someone telling you what to do, um, you know, who to report to. You go to meetings, et cetera. And when you're becoming an entrepreneur or making that switch full time, you know, you're like, OK, I'm my own boss. What do I do? Uh, where, where do I start? Like, you know, who am I going to have a meeting with or whatever? So I really had to come up with some type of process to um, figure out if I was doing it right. And there's no manual on how here's how you be an entrepreneur. And every sector obviously is different. And for me, going from corporate to creative, that's what I kind of call it. Um, it was quite, you know, challenging for me, um, but it's gotten better as time goes along because I think you have to give yourself grace and time and just figure it out. You know, it's like you're starting a new position at a corporate job, but you don't know what you're doing. So you just, you know, you get up on that learning curve and sometimes the learning curve continues. So, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned that it was challenging. And as a mindset coach, a certified mindset coach, I do have to ask a question around mindset. What was it like to have to to shift and to reframe your thinking? What did what do you find was the most challenging thing that you had to do when it came to mindset piece? I think the most challenging part for me was the order of the day. You know, mm -hmm. one thing I did say I was going to do. I was going to get up the same time that I got up as if I was going to a regular full time job. Like I didn't want to, you know, some people think, especially with voice acting, people think, oh, you can just record in your pajamas and you can. But I don't <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get up. I wanted to be at my job at nine thirty or nine o'clock. So I gave myself a start time. Um 
and I tried to come up with a flow. So the challenging part was what to do between nine to five, so to speak. Um, what are okay. you doing? Are you marketing? Are you um, reaching out to customers? Are you auditioning? Are you editing? I mean, there's so many things that you could be doing, but you have to kind of get some type of flow, a workflow, mm -hmm. if you will. And mm -hmm. coming as, as a project manager, that, you know, workflow was my middle name, if you will. And plan, 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 and order, order, order was was just in my inner being. So that was the most challenging part, how to flow day to day. And I'm sure it's different for different entrepreneurs. If you provide a service or making a product, you know, if you don't have any orders, you know, what are you going to do? So you have to learn how to fill that in. Of course, you want to continue to generate income. So marketing and even that was a learning curve and still is um, for mm -hmm. me as well. So. Yeah, the marketing is a beast all on its own, and and yeah. and it's a, I mean it's, it's a huge piece of any business. It and then really as an is. entrepreneur, as a solopreneur, really, how else are people going to learn about you without without marketing? But there, I find it's marketing. It can you can make it your own. You can make it your own. It's like you said, there's no manual for entrepreneurship. I feel like, of course, there there's certain steps and there's a process to successfully marketing, but really kind right. of making it your own as I found has been like the best thing. Okay. So yeah. let's get into like the juicy part. <laughs> so when we were talking, um, one of our previous conversations, you had said you kept both worlds separate. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it was, was almost like living a double life. And I'm yeah. sure this is something that is very common for side hustlers, especially if or because you don't want your nine to five to know what you're doing on the side or that you're earning extra income or you don't want people in your yeah. business or whatever it is. So for why sure. do you find that you had to lead this double life, if you will? <laughs> So it's really interesting because I just grew up in an era, I'm a Gen Xer, and so I grew up in an era where your right hand didn't know what your left hand was doing. You know, I just, that that's how I was raised. And I was also raised that, you know, you do a good job at your job and then you'll get promoted and you'll make more money. But as we know, that is not the case. So I worked um, for a media company, a large media company in Atlanta. And because I was doing voiceover, in my mind, I created this narrative like, they can't know about my voiceover because I don't know, it'll be a conflict, if you will. Okay, and okay. so I lived these separate lives. I didn't let my nine to five know about my voiceover and I didn't let the voiceover know about my nine to five. Because another thing, I didn't want my voiceover to know about my nine to five because I wanted them to take me seriously, if you will. I didn't want them to think, oh, this is just a, a hobby or a little part-time gig for her. So I wanted to be respected and I wanted to be in the game as a full-time voice actor. And so mm. I had two lives. Um, I mean, down to the LinkedIn profile, down to the Instagram, down to the Facebook. It was two Sandys everywhere. <laughs> okay. And that's hard to maintain. And so another challenge was when you talk about marketing, when I did make that flip to full time voiceover, I had all these personas, if you will, to manage, you know, these social media profiles to manage. And it was even difficult for me to merge them you know, and, and take that plunge and say, okay, this is what you do now. You don't do project manager management anymore. And so that was really challenging and come to find out at later on before I left corporate, um, a lot of people do this, meaning mm -hmm. like a lot of people have side hustles. <laughs> I mean, more than you can imagine, obviously. And so it's okay. And I think also corporate America had to adjust because I think they want their employees to be well-rounded. Well and I think when you have a side hustle, it makes your corporate a little bit easier, at least for me, to manage. Because, you know, you're like, okay, I'm doing this corporate job. I can't wait to go home and do my side hustle, but I'm going to do the best of my ability. But I know I got something in the background. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and even when it came to voice acting, because you're always auditioning. So it's kind of like this subliminal competition. So mm -hmm. I always said in my head, well, I have a full-time job. So if I don't book this audition, 
then I know I'm going to get a paycheck, right. you know? Right. So that, that was the, the double mindedness. That's some of the double minded um, examples, but letting your job know, especially if it now, if it is a clear conflict, that's a different story, but there was no conflict unless I was doing something for a competitor then that would be a conflict. And normally I would just turn those down. I wouldn't even audition. So it's very important to figure out if there's a conflict and then um, how you're going to show up. And it's tiring because it's like you have a second job. When Mm. I say tiring, meaning like the long hours you're putting in, not the fact, the the job that you have, but um, it can be conflicting sometimes. But I had to make that plunge and just come out, so to speak, and say, hey, I'm a full-time voice actor now. So, and it was amazing because some people had heard me, uh, some coworkers, they had heard some of my commercials on the radio or something like that. And they were like, when I finally made that confession, if you will, that was on my last day of work. I finally said, although you may not see me, you may hear me. And I got loads of emails saying, I thought I heard you and, you know, and it was very accepted. It was, you know, so like I said, I created that narrative in my head based on old tradition Mm, and it wasn't mm. even, it didn't even matter. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I totally, I totally get it. Gen Xers, ooh, best generation ever. Um, I get it. I totally get that. And knowing that you in the corporate setting and you're supposed to, put your all into your corporate job and give them all your, your best hours and your best years and all that good stuff that we were conditioned to believing. I want to ask you, what was your, what was the time management piece? Like, how did you, were you able to lead this double life? I love saying well, double life because something like, dun, dun, dun. I know. <laughs> yeah. Double life. The, the, the time management piece that was a beast um, because I, I, where I live, traffic is like serious. So on the way there in traffic, that's the one thing I try to get in any part of voiceover that I could. And when I say that, meaning like learning, you know, whenever you have a business, you got to learn about the competition. You got to learn about the trends. Um, And I would always listen to podcasts related to voiceover. And sometimes my heart would be beating so fast because I'm like, I just want to pull over, turn around and go back to my booth. And, you know, I just wanted to to be that full time person. But time management was I mean, I worked probably about on a daily basis, at least 14 to 16 hours. Obviously, I have no kids, but I do have a husband. (laughs) And so every time he would come home from work, the door would be closed. So it it was a lot. It was a lot of uh, just hustle, if you will, you know, side hustle, no pun. But it really was a lot of hustle, that time management. And I worked on weekends. It was Mm -hmm. just because I was trying to establish and prepare for my exit strategy. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, exit strategy, my favorite thing. Okay, so time management was um, that because that I feel like is the biggest piece to be. If you're successful at time management, then um, then you can master li- living the double life. And yeah. what would you say you struggled with the most? So I talk. We talk about challenges from going the transition from employee to entrepreneur. But what would you say like you struggled with or just knowing what other side hustlers are dealing with right now, what they encounter, what they experience. What do you feel like when you hear their stories, you resonate most with, and you are now successful and can share like, yeah, I struggle with this, but here's how I got over it. Yeah. So I I would say, interesting enough, the time management piece, because that was a struggle when I did transition to doing voiceover full-time. I still was working the same hours and, you know, because I don't know if that was just, just in me or I was just used to that, but I just continued to work the same hours. They may have not been 14 to 16 hours, but it may have been 12, 12 to 14. So I had to learn how to prioritize. I had to learn how to prioritize. And I also had to set some boundaries for my wonderful Mm -hmm. family and friends Because when you are a side hustler, or even if you work in corporate America and have a side hustle and you work from home, people look at that differently. They seem Mm -hmm. to think that you're at home 
I don't know, eating bonbons or something, you know, and it's like, no, I'm working. And because I had that, as I mentioned earlier, that strict work time, like start time, nine, nine thirty, and, you know, break and then get off around six, you know, sometimes the calls would be coming in. And especially, I think also for some people, maybe during the pandemic, when everybody, when the majority of the workforce was working from home, you have to, you know, you're still at work. So I wanted to respect my work hours and I wanted my family and friends to respect my other life, if you will. So managing the time and turning my phone down. Um, setting timers, uh, like I use my smart device. Some people use Pareto, I think it is. Um, but I set my smart device and I say, smart device, I don't want to call their name because they'll wake up. But anyway, I'll say mm-hmm. smart device, set a timer for 50 minutes. And so I would just do 50 minute chunks. And that has worked out perfectly for me. And like I said, some people have a timer. I even have a physical timer on my um, com- my desk area, but that just didn't work for me. When I hear that bell, you know, that audible sound, and maybe because this is a, I'm a voiceover, but when I heard that audible thing, then I was like, okay, good, I can stop. And then it made me focus more. So focus and time management were the the biggest struggles because when you don't have a manager over you saying, hey, are you going to get that in by, you know, two o'clock or what have you? It's just, you know, free will, (laughs) if you will, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned uh, setting boundaries because I know from when I first started my business and having this conversation with other entrepreneur friends, when we talked about setting boundaries, it always came back to people don't understand what we're doing, they don't understand. Well, if well, you work for yourself and you work from home, so you can take my call at 1130, <laughs> right? So um, it's true. It's really key to to set those boundaries, but also setting those boundaries at your nine to five. I actually recently recorded an episode talking about creating boundaries. Boundaries are so key. They really, they really are. are key, but they're boundaries within yourself as well. Let's talk about that. Um, mm-hmm. Because you had longer days, you were living this double life. How did you set Um, How did you set boundaries within and for yourself? Well, you know, it came down to a point where um, my business, if you will, told me, (laughs) meaning like because my business as a business owner is my voice is my moneymaker, you know, working 10 to 12 hours or 12 hours plus your voice gives out. And also this, because it's a creative type job, if you will, mindset is so key because if you get wrapped up or distracted by other things that impact your emotions or mentally, it's going to come out. And so I had to, I had to discipline myself. I had to be the boss. You know what I mean? and set those boundaries and say, you need to take a break every 50 minutes and you need to go outside sometimes. Um, as a voice actor, you're always in this 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 booth and it's about four by five feet. And <laughs> that's very small and you're not seeing people a lot. And so you have to manage your time and yourself as a boss and say, hey, you need to take a break. Hey, you need to cut it off. Hey, you're tired. You just need to cut it off. And um, those are some of the things that I have to do and continue to do because I'm very driven and a bit of a workaholic. So I have to set those those boundaries and stick to them. And for me, habitually works the best. Like I have to do it like at a a routine or regimen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, and it's and. This is why I knew I wanted to talk to you about the the double life and just finding out how you were successful at it to then but then to go from corporate to creative and you know take away whatever you need to take away from your nine to five and apply that into your side hustle. But yeah. in that time, it was 
as you try to juggle or manage the two, there was probably a huge learning curve there. Because as, as you said, Gen Xer, you're, you're supposed to be incorporated. And you're supposed to yeah. get the job and get the promotion and move up and da 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 da. da. And now you're in, ta- in, in um, you're in management and you're and you got another position. You got another promotion and you're making more money. And yeah, absolutely, I get it. What is a a, a the number one thing you feel like? somebody who is right now in the space of trying to master the double life of everything else, all the other challenges, all the other struggles, what is one thing that they need to be very, very clear on with themselves in order to do it? If they, if they choose to continue to do that double Double life life. and live to do the two separately, what is one thing that they need to be very clear on with themselves in order to do it successfully? I feel like the number one thing is the money piece, Mm. the money piece. So when I was living the other life in corporate, I saved all the income that I made from voiceover and I didn't touch it. I continued to live off my corporate salary and I didn't touch it because what I wanted to do was set up a seed, if you will, for taxes, Mm. for charitable giving, for savings for my business. And so I made sure that I saved everything that I I made so that when I did make that switch, I would feel a little more comfortable financially that I had, you know, it was like an emergency fund for your business or recession proof because what happened? The pandemic happened. And even though on the flip side for voiceover, it was the greatest time ever, you know, but if you did something different, let's say you were a food service provider, you know, you're going to have some deficiencies in the income part. So I would say, make sure your income is, is being saved as you continue. That's the best thing about doing, living the double life actually, is that you have some income that is steady and you can use some of that income to help fund and support and build your business. Um, So the income thing is very important. And part of the income thing is the tax thing. You know, Mm -hmm. we live in, oh, good old USA. And so if you don't have your taxes, (laughs) you know, and so I always made whatever I made, I split it up into three parts mainly. One for taxes, a percentage for taxes, a percentage for business savings or income, future income, and then a percentage for charitable giving. Oh, and I'm sorry, for operations. So I was trying to prepare myself and run like a business full time, although I was working the, the, the full time, the other corporate job. So I think finances and another thing, you know, I worked, um, I took my salary and I said, you know what? One year, if I can make 50% of my salary, then I'm closer to my exit strategy. Then I bumped it up to 75% of my salary. So I wanted to get to the point where I feel very comfortable that I could actually replace my salary. And Mm -hmm. for me, that was key. When I found out, oh, you can really do this and replace your salary and live on it, then it's, it's wonderful. So, um, I say get your get a plan together on your exit strategy. You know, some people just like I was so fed up. I just said I quit. And believe me, I had a lot of those days. I was like, I can't wait. I got to, you know, but you really to me, you have to plan. And I'm not a risk averse. I'm very risk averse. And so Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure this is something that I could do on my own, relying on me, Sandy Harrison Cooksey. And so the finance piece is very, very key. But I say, take advantage of it. If you're living the double life, take advantage of it, but do it wisely and get that, that security, if you will, um, in your bank account. You're speaking my language because I'm always talking about my 3D exit strategy and, and, you know, to, to avoid the I quit moment and just walking away, like let's plan it. And and I'm Absolutely. amazed at how many times when I ask people in that, the, they're still in the corporate setting, the nine to five setting, they have a side hustle. Have you considered an exit strategy? And they're like, no, I really haven't. Right. So I love being able to support my clients through creating their, their exit strategy. I love that you did that. Yeah. Yes. Kudos yeah. to you. Okay. Yeah. 
I know it's, as we start wrapping up, this was, I can't believe all the time just flew by, but as we start wrapping up, do you have anything coming up? What's going on in your world that people need to know about from you? So, yes, um, as a voice actor, I was, and a business owner, again, I was just lost. I didn't know what to do. So my, another passion of mine is money and personal finance per se. Um, and so I love personal finance. So I just, I am going to launch a digital course on how to set up your business down to the entity structure, down to um, EIN, um, just so different, like a toolkit of what you need, um, even the bank accounts. And um, I'm going to launch that in Q1 2024 um, to try to help people set up their voiceover business. Because, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I have a business card. I have a business. That doesn't mean you have a business just because you have a business card and you're doing it. And mm -hmm. I found that a lot of people do not have their business structure. So that's another advantage of leading the double life. You can start setting up your business. And that's exactly what I did. I got, I set it up wrong the first time. And then I learned after tax season, okay, I need to do something different. And so you need to set yeah. up your business because if you really do want it to be a full-time business, you are the employer. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not this person who makes, you know, a thousand dollars here or five hundred dollars here and you just put it in. No, you need yeah. to have it organized and structured and put it in accounts and have a budget, all that. I mean, that. You're, yeah. you're the employer. I, yeah, absolutely. You are. You're the employer, the employee, you're the janitor, you're the cook. Yes. You're all of that. <laughs> you're all everything. That. You're, all, you're all of those things. Okay. So as yeah. we wrap things up, thank you for sharing. So everything will be, make sure you follow Sandy. You, everything will be linked in the show notes. So you can, you can find her and connect with her. She's a very sweet soul. But before yeah. I absolutely let you go, do you have a nugget to share with us today? A nugget. Yes. I would say grow as you go. And I have to give credit to this other voice actor who said that, but grow as you go. Don't think that you have to jump in fully and start, you know, doing everything. Like if you're selling a product, don't think that, oh my God, I got to have it across all, you know, selling platforms and all that. Grow as you go. Um, and hold on to that that full time job so that you can grow and you can take that income to build your business. Yeah. Um, so grow as you go. Don't go all at it. You know, get all the the business cards, t shirts, and all that, and then you don't <laughs> even have a EIN number or you don't even have a, a a contract agreement. You know, for new customers or a marketing strategy or a social media plan, mm -hmm. you know, so grow as you go and, and get to your that. exit strategy, you know, I mean, get to your final destination, which is full time. Full time. time. Yes, baby. Yes. yes if, if that's yes. a thing. So thank you yes. so much, Sandy, course, for being here you. with me today and sharing your experience. And there were quite a few nuggets in there for the listeners. And I'm excited for you and your thank course you. and your voice acting and everything else that you're doing. And thank I appreciate you, so you being here with me. And we will connect again soon. Of Bye. course. And thank you so much for having me, CJ. I love your podcast. Thank you so much. Aww. 